my topic is hierarchy of codes in india administration of justice is the most important function of the state for this purpose our constitution has set up a hierarchy of courts the supreme court of india is the highest court and is a body constituted by the constitution itself the high courts of respective states are also provided by the constitution the other criminal courts their powers and functions are provided by the crpc this chart is shown has the chart of the judiciary in which the supreme court of india then the high courts then the subordinate courts and they are subordinate of the high court supreme court of india the supreme court of india is the apex court of india it is established by part 5th chapter 4th of the constitution article 124 to 147 of the constitution of india lay down the composition and jurisdiction of the supreme court of india the supreme court of india comprising the chief justice and 30 other judges appointed by the president of india supreme court judges retired up to attaining the age of 65 years in order to be appointed as a judge of the supreme court a person must be a citizen of india and must have been for at least 5 years a judge of high court and of two or more such courts in succession or an advocate of a high court or of two or more such courts in succession for at least 10 years yeah he must be in the opinion of the president a distinguished jurist provision regarding exist for the judges of the judges of a high court as an head of judge of the supreme court and for retired judges of the supreme court ya yeah, high court to sit and act as a judge of that court and these are the types of the jurisdiction of the supreme court and there are four types of jurisdiction number 1 original jurisdiction in which two types of original jurisdiction number 1 disputes relating to the union and the states number 2 dispute involving the violation of the fundamental rights then the second is appellate jurisdiction and there are also the four head of the appellate jurisdiction number 1 appeal in civil cases appeals in criminal cases appeal in constitutional cases and specially which are to appeal in the supreme court and third one that is the advisory jurisdiction in which that is give its legal opinion on the matters refer to it by the president number 4 review jurisdiction and the power of the judicial review it means it can be pronounced upon upon the constitutional validity of leave which is passed by the legislature or action taken by the administrative authority now the supreme court has the appellate original and advisory jurisdiction its exclusive original jurisdiction which is extend to any dispute between the government of india and one or more states or between the government of india and any state or states on one side and one or more states on the other side or between the two or more states if and in so far as the dispute involves any questions whether of law or whether of fact on which the existence of the extent of a legal right depends in addition article 32 of the constitution gives an extensive original jurisdiction to the supreme court in regard to enforcement of fundamental rights it is the 
empowerment to issue direction orders yeah rates and including the rates of habeas corpus mandamus prohibition to warranto and statutory to enforce them the supreme court has been conferred with power to direct transfer of any civil or criminal cases from one state uh, high court and to another state high court yeah from a court subordinate to another state high court the supreme court uh, if satisfied that cases involving the same or substantially the same questions of law are pending before it and one or more high courts yeah before two or more high courts and that such questions are substantially question of general importance we uh, may withdraw a case yeah cases pending before the high courts and high court and dispose of all such cases itself under the arbitration and conciliation act 1996 international commercial arbitration can also be initiated in the supreme court the appellant jurisdiction of the supreme court can be involved by a certificate which are granted by the high court concerned at under article 132 clause 1 133 clause 1 and 134 of the constitution in respect of any judgment a decree or final order of a high court in both civil and criminal cases which are involving substantially questions of law has to the interpretation of the constitution appeal also lies to the supreme court in civil matters if the high court concerned certifies that the case involved a substantially question of law of general importance that in the opinion of the high court the said question needs to be decided by the supreme court in criminal cases an appeal lies to the supreme court if the high court has on appeal reversed an order of acquittal of an accused person and sentenced him to death or to imprisonment for life or for a period of not less than 10 years or has withdrawn for trial before itself any case from any court subordinate to its authority and has in such trial convicted the accused and sentenced him to death or to imprisonment for life or for a period of not less than 10 years yeah certified that the case is fit for appeal to the supreme court parliament is authorized to confer on the supreme court any further powers to entertain or hear the appeals from any judgment from any final order or sentence in a criminal proceeding of a high court then then next court is high court as we know the high court stands at the head of the states judicial administration each high court comprising of a chief justice and such other judges as the parliament Uh, president may from time to time may appoint and the chief justice of high court is appointed by the president in consultation with the chief justice of india and the governor of the state the procedure for appointing the judges of the high court is same except that the chief justice of the high court concerned is also consulted they hold office until the age of 62 years and are removable in the same manner as a judge of the supreme court under article 124 clause 4 to be eligible for the appointment as a judge one must be a citizen of india as we know and have held a judicial office in india for uh, uh, 10 years or uh, must have practicing as an advocate of a high court or two or more such courts in a succession for a similar period each high court has power to issue to any person within its jurisdiction 
that is the directions orders or reads in the nature of habeas corpus mandamus prohibition coevarant to and such are the enforcement of the fundamental rights yeah violation of the fundamental rights yeah for any purpose this power may also be exercised by any high court exercising the jurisdiction in the relation to territories within which the cause of action fully or in part arising for exercising of such power notwithstanding that the seat of uh, such government or authority or residence of such person is not within those territories each high court has the power of the superintendence over all courts yeah it can be said that the subordinate judiciary it can call for editors from such courts make general rules or prescribe forms to regulate their practice and proceedings and determine the manner and form in which books entries and accounts shall be kept and there are the criminal courts and uh, what are their territorial jurisdiction as we know the criminal courts are constituted according to the criminal procedure court 1973 section 6 of the crpc provides that beside the high courts and the courts constituted under any law other than this court there shall be in every state and what are the classes of the criminal cases uh, courts which are namely number 1 court of sex, court of sessions number 2 judicial magistrate of first class in any metropolitan area metropolitan magistrates number 3 judicial magistrates of the second class and number 4 executive magistrate section 9 of the crpc talks about the establishment of the session court and it is the highest court in the district the state government establish the session court which has to be presiding by a judge which is appointed by the high court the high court appoints additional as well as assistant session judges and the court of sessions ordinarily sits at such place ya places as ordered by the high court and the additional or assistant session judge these are appointed by the high court of a particular state they are responsible for cases which are relating to the murder which are relating to the theft which are relating to the decat yeah pickpocketing and other such cases in case of the absence of the session judge the judicial magistrate in every district which is not a metropolitan area there shall be as many has judicial magistrate of the first class and the second class gmic first class and gmic second class the presiding officers shall be appointed by the high courts every judicial magistrate shall be subordinate to the session judge then cgm that is known as the chief judicial magistrate except for the metropolitan area the judicial magistrate of the first class shall be appointed by the chief judicial magistrate only the judicial magistrate of the first class may be designated as the additional judi- chief judicial magistrate then the next is metropolitan magistrate metropolitan magistrate they are established in the metropolitan area the high court have the power to appoint the presiding officer of such metropolitan court 
the metropolitan magistrate shall be appointed as a chief metropolitan magistrate the metropolitan magistrate shall work under the instructions of the session judge and the last is executive magistrate as we know according to section 20 in every district and in every metropolitan area an executive magistrate shall be appointed by the state government and one of them becomes the district magistrate and uh, what are the powers of the court of such court to pass this sentence sentence which may be passed by the courts have been mentioned under section 28 and 29 of the crpc according to section 28 a high court may pass any sentence authorized by the law a session judge or additional session judge may pass any sentence authorized by the law but any sentence of death passed by any such judge shall be subject to the confirmation of the high court any assistant session judge may pass any sentence authorized by law except a sentence of death or of imprisonment of for life or imprisonment for a term exceeding 10 years the section 26 provides the types of court in which the different offenses can be tried and then under section 28 it spells out the limits of sentence which such courts are authorized to pass section 29 lays down the quantum of the sentence which different categories of magistrates are empowered to impose to the accused persons the powers of the individual categories of a magistrate to pass the sentence are as under therefore the court of a cgm may pass any sentence authorized by law except a sentence of death or death of imprisonment for life yeah imprisonment for a term exceeding 7 years and the court of a magistrate is the first class may pass a sentence of imprisonment for a term not exceeding 3 years or a fine not exceeding 5000 rupees or with both and sentence of the imprisonment in the default of the fine when the fine is imposed on an accused is not paid the law provides that it he can be imprisonment for a term in addition to substantive imprisonment awarded to him if any section 30g defines the limit of magistrate powers to award imprisonment in default of the payment of a fine and it also provides that the court of a magistrate may award such terms of imprisonment in default of the payment of fine which is authorized by law and it may be provided that the term is not in excess of the power of magistrate under section 29 shall not their imprisonment has been avoided as a part of the substantive uh, sentence exceeding one fourth of the term of the imprisonment which the magistrate is competent to inflict as punishment for the offence otherwise than as imprisonment in the part of the payment of the fine so section 31 are relates to the quantum of the punishment which the court is authorized by law to impose when the accused is convicted of two or more offenses at one trial when a person is com committed at one trial of two or more offenses the court may subject to the provision of section 71 of the ipc sentence him for such offense to the several punishment prescribed therefore which such court is competent to inflict such punishments when consisting of imprisonment to commence the one after the expiry of the other 
in such order has the court may direct unless the court directs that such punishment shall run concurrently and the second one in case of consecutive sentence it shall not be necessary for the court by reason only of the aggregate punishment for the several offenses being in excess of the punishment uh, which it is competent to inflict on conviction of a single offense to send the offender for a trial before a higher court the aggregate punishment shall not be exceed twice the amount of punishment which the court is competent to inflict for a single offense so far appeal for the purpose of appeal by a convicted person the aggregate of consecutive sentence against him under this section shall be deemed to be a single sentence so at the last the hierarchy of courts has been developed in such a manner that it becomes easy for everyone who is living in this country to knock the doors of the court whenever a dispute arises before the court it provides a platform for the citizen for appealing to the higher court that is the high court and the supreme court in case they feel that justice has been denied to them by the lower court india is a country with a huge population in it therefore it needs this existing system of judiciary to proper and makes its process easily so that people can approach it easily so that justice is given to all citizens of this country thank you very much